Welcome back to Management Decision Tools. Today we will discuss the expanded version of queue systems that involve multiple servers, more than one server. Our agenda today is very simple, uh, three items on the agenda. First, we look at the constituents, how the setup is like for multiple server, what is involved, the performance, and how to go about calculating or estimating um, the necessary parameters and uh, thereby helping us to make decisions about things that involve queue systems with multiple servers. And then we move on to talk about the costs. Uh, queue systems basically are costs uh, producers in some sense and they incur costs on us, they make damage to us in terms of um, eating away our time and our productivity and uh, items wait in line that basically wait and that, mean, that means uh, spend time doing nothing while at the same time servers are made to idle. So we know that inherently there is cost involved but we like to quantify it. So in the second item we want to discuss how much are we paying for all these inactivities. The third item uh, by the time we reach that means we already have the ability to discuss about multiple servers, their performances, their uh, costs, and then we can talk about uh, what kind of configurations we would like when we are having K servers. Yep, so we, we are going to, uh, by then, have the ability to look at different configurations and thereby uh, selecting wisely what is a better configuration. So let's get started with what does a multiple server queue system look like. So uh, in fact, it looks very similar. We still have the three components of a queue system, remember. A, a queue system will have a boundary that defines what is in and what is out of the queue system so that we can count what is in and time what is in the queue system because uh, customers that are outside the queue system uh, will not be our responsibility, the queue system's responsibility. So we have the boundary, we have a queue component of the queue system where the customers end up waiting. All right, so, so we draw it logically as one uh, block, usually to the left, but uh, in real life, it could be that the customers are lined up uh, physically everywhere, like patients waiting to see doctor sit all over the corners, uh, benches, gardens, all over the hospitals, right? Waiting for their, their doctors, waiting for the turds. And the, uh, the servers typically are on the other side, on one side that we again draw for logical convenience, we group them together. But of course, physically in real world, these could be scattered everywhere across different floors in the hospital. Um, even on the same floor, it could be uh, you know spread out for various reasons, for a need for space and uh, uh, cleanliness and hygiene purposes and so on. So we have servers and let's just uh, for the sake of reference, call this the service area. Right, or the area where the servers perform their services. So these three components, the boundary, the queue component of the queue systems, and the service area, they constitute the three uh, essential and, in fact, the only components that we care to think about. Now, um, similar to the one server system when we talked about the arrival rate, the average arrival rate, lambda, which is in terms of units of customers per time, such as minute, hour, uh, whatever time unit is relevant to the system. So at, uh, at the rate of arrival, average rate of arrival of lambda customer per hour, we uh, have three servers in this case, so k equals to three, where k equals to the number of servers. In this example here, we see three servers, so k equals to three. Now remember in the one server case, every server is described by a number, uh, essentially the ability to clear the customers in certain timings, the, the mu, right? Mu is the service rate, 
right? So every server has a service range. And for example, for our example here, let's say this is four per hour, four customers per hour. And again, for the sake of example, we say that on average, there are three customers arriving every hour. And on average, meal is four customers per hour. Now, immediately we have this question. When a question po is posed to us and says uh, meal is four per hour, does it mean that each server is having a capacity of four customers to per hour and therefore for the whole service area there are 12 uh, customers per hour clearance capacity or are we talking about the entire service area can collectively perform a clearance of four customers per hour and the answer is always that uh, the mu applies to each server there's no ambiguity, no exception about this. So it is always unambiguous to say that, uh, oh, look, there are three servers, mu is four per hour. We do not need to cl clarify. Do you mean mu refers to all three or does it mean individual? Because it will always be individual. So mu refers to individual. Okay. Now, there are, there are questions about, um, let's, let's think about this as a bank, uh, bank branch example where there are three cashier officers, right? And on average, three customers per hour, they arrive. Uh, it, it doesn't have to be on the dot, like one customer every 20 minutes. It could be that no customer comes for the entire hour. At the 59th minute, three customers arrive. And that would give us three, an average of three customers per hour also. All right. So they come along and we have three cashier officers, right? So they help to serve customers. What would you like to do today? And so on. Now, uh, of course, our common sense tells us not all servers have the same performance. Uh, server 1 is a trainee cashier, server 2 is a junior hire, and server 3 has got 10 years experience behind the counter. So obviously, we would expect S3 to be having a higher service rate, yes, because uh, he or she could be more efficient because uh, you know, the procedures are totally known, it's all in the memory, you don't have to check. Whereas trainee would have to uh, hold on, sir, let me check whether this is possible, goes behind the door and, uh, you know, finds the manager, checks the manager and then comes back out again. I'm sorry, you cannot do that, you have to fill this form first. So uh, we would expect the muse to be different, that's my point. Unfortunately, using our model, all the servers have to be identical and hence, when we specify mu, it refers to all three servers having the same mu. All right, there is no exception about that. Now, if it is a real life bank branch scenario where the trainee, the junior hire, and the senior hire, they're all really having drastically very different service rates, then we would say that this model doesn't quite cope uh, with the real life situation very well. Okay, so there are limitations to how far we can go about applying the multi-server scenario. All right, but having said that, typically, typically to be to have the proficiency to be deployed to face customers, it usually means that the company is pretty confident about even the trainee officer uh, to be you know uh, willing to take the risk of letting the person uh, face the customer. So it probably would not be differing by such drastic amount so that uh, having single mu not only simplifies the description but it also helps to simplify all the mathematics that come along with the calculations so uh, balancing everything it's probably not too bad an idea after all okay so that's what's what's meant by identical server they all have the same average service rates therefore if we have k servers then collectively at the servicing area all the servers will collectively uh, produce a capacity of uh, k times mu number of customers per hour in other words as a system the all the servers collectively can clear k times mu number of customers per hour okay and uh, we earlier on noted that for the, sir, sir, for the queue system, 
the services, the servers, the customers for the entire operation of the queue systems to be stable. In other words, we don't expect any infinity to blow up, such as the queue system, uh, uh, the, the, the queue component size going towards, creeping towards infinity. So for it to be stable, that uh, the size of the queue component will be finite. Okay, it could be large theoretically, like one million, but so long as it doesn't creep towards infinity, then it is considered stable system. So we noted last time that for the queue system to be stable, lambda has to be less than mu. All right. Uh, this time round, and the expanded version uh, involves K server. So let's modify our stability condition to include K. So for the for the Q system to be stable, right? Let's just put the note here for the Q uh, for the Q system to be stable. That is uh, average Q size uh, L Q L of Q is the symbol does not go to infinity as time passes. So that's the meaning of stable, right? So uh, LQ is a finite number. Uh, in practice, we don't like LQ to be large. That means we do expect the Q to be very, very long, right? So in practice, that's not the point. But uh, theoretically, so long as LQ is stable, is a is a constant, it's not creeping towards infinity, then our Q system essentially works. Okay. Now, how do we check whether that condition is fulfilled? Just check whether lambda is indeed less than k times mu. So fortunately, this, this uh, formula, this condition formula, uh, it reduces to exactly lambda is less than mu when k equals 1. So actually, we just have one formula, not two formulas, right? So so long as lambda is less than k mu, then every hour that passes, we can expect to clear uh, lambda. So lambda customers come in, lambda customers go out. Yeah, because our mu is greater than lambda, our k mu is greater than lambda. So definitely we can, on average, maybe this hour we clear only two, but next hour we'll, we'll clear four. Uh, so, so, I mean, uh, it cannot be that every hour, all the customers are taking uh, far longer service time than we have expected. Because if that's the case, then um, actually your mu cannot be sustained at four. It, it will be reduced because you can clear less number of customers per hour. So uh, when we have these numbers, 3 and 4, it is uh, true that we can say that we have the ability to clear 3 on average every hour. So that 3 comes in, 3 goes out, and we are kind of stable. Now, there, the only times when the uh, queue will actually hover a little bit, like grow a little bit, shrink a little bit, is more because uh, every hour it's not exactly 3, right? Some hours there could be 5 followed by an hour that is pretty loud, nobody came, you know, so it averages down and then we can clear. And then another, so after lunchtime, uh, uh, peak comes back again and so on and so forth. So, so there'll be some, some uh, uh, bunching up of customers, some uh, spreading apart of customers. And those are the, the real reasons why we end up having a queue there. Yeah, so, so long as mu, k mu together as a whole uh, is able to clear the incoming lambda on average on an average out basis then we are safe right we we don't expect the queue to grow towards infinity now very importantly um, customers cannot choose which server uh, is is going to be his or her server so for for due to whatever reason i want to be the first so only s1 can serve me you know uh, no two is my lucky number it's even so uh, it's auspicious and you cannot choose you cannot choose. So in other words, if I tell you for this setup, if I tell you there are four customers in the system, in the bounding box, how would you draw the four customers? All right. It cannot be that they are all here and then the servers are idling, can it? They cannot. They cannot. Yeah, because we know that customer, the first the next customer to be served, cannot choose and cannot withhold uh, being served. So that's not allowed, right? So the only configuration that is possible is that we have 
uh, customers being served like this. Yeah, and again, the rest cannot say I don't want S two S three. They are a bit rude. I like S S one better. So you can't say that. And so all three will have to be served. 